Time now for the markets. A lot going on this week. Here's Zach Ashmore to bring you up to date. Zach? Thanks, Mike. Markets fluctuating, showing signs of healthy activity. What does that mean? Well, prices are getting back to normal, signifying an economic recovery, albeit slow. Let's take a look. Last week's biggest gain, lumber regaining momentum up $44. Remember, this is building season and COVID sapped lumber production. Supplies low for now, but they'll catch up. Biggest loss, corn, closely followed by wheat. This is not entirely a bad thing. U.S. grains becoming more competitive price-wise means bigger sales. Market analyst Sue Martin tells us more. Well, I think as the dollar is moving lower, it's making U.S. commodities in general very competitive and cheaper. Um, you look at uh, wheat, you take and, and adjust that by the dollar, or you take corn. You know, looking at corn, we're running right about just a little over $3 a bushel. Um, so the dollar is having a huge impact on the decline that it's seeing. Uh, in the meantime, you know, demand is good, but... You know, wheat has had some pretty good export sales this year. We're running ahead of a year ago. Uh, so, you know, that's not negative news. So we need the export business because we're also dealing with less ethanol production compared to a year ago because of COVID-19. And so, and it's not just in the U.S., it's in Brazil. They're not using as much ethanol or biodiesel either because people are not traveling uh, like they normally would. And so, you know, we're competing against fuel, crude oil, what have you. Um, we're just in a, a very negative atmosphere, I guess I would say. But all in all, when it comes to corn, I think the bottom line is going to end up being the weather. Because remember, acres are much less than what we originally started with thinking we were going to have in uh, March on the prospective plantings. Recent flooding in China having a potential effect on the markets. This would explain their recent buying of U.S. goods despite political tensions. If the worst comes to bear, they could find themselves in an economic plunge. To explain further, once again, Sue Martin. The Yangtze River Basin has had their share of flooding. Uh, over the next week, week and a half, they should start to settle down and maybe see more favorable weather. Uh, but that area should start after the 10th of August to see another surge of horrific rains. The monsoonal rains in China have been record. And so they're catching plentiful rain. It's heavy rains moving into the northeastern part of the grain belt where you do see a lot of corn, some soybeans being raised. That's not good for that. But in the meantime, it's also moving into the southeastern part of the country as well, or the southern part of the country. Here's the thing, though. If these rains, um, the, they're worried about the Three Gorges Dam and other dams that also feed along the tributaries and what have you. But should these rains continue to kick in and remain heavy, and we start to see another resurgence of these rains coming downstream to that Three Gorges Dam, the fear is that there could be a black swan situation in China where you could have earthquakes set off and they could be a five magnitude on the Richter scale, something like that, uh, because of all the weight of this water that is um, sitting on top of these tectonic plates. And if that was to happen and breach that uh, gorgeous dam, you would have 480 million people in China jeopardized. They would be lost. And so you'd lose a generation of people. But more, not more importantly, but a concern is China's agriculture would just be lost. It would be horrible uh, for them. And that's a black swan event. It may not happen. But if it does... And you put that at the same time that we're running with COVID-19 here, running with phase one, and they have to be buying, all of a sudden, is there enough to take care of them if that black swan event was to right. happen? Moving on to other ag issues, the ever-present ligus, or plant feeding insect. Their effect on final yields and therefore the market is significant. However, there are misconceptions. Dr. Angus Catchout of Mississippi State Extension explains. Plant bugs, of course, they, they get in cotton, no doubt, but they they got 
just hundreds of hosts that they are that they're on. They would really rather be in those other things in the ditch banks and other stuff. If you got Daisy Fleabane, Coreopsis, Pigweed, and all this stuff, it's a better host. They would rather be there, but those hosts don't last forever. And when those things dry up, that's when they move in into your fields and you go through these really hot dry periods like we've been for the last couple of weeks and those ditch bank hosts dry up that's when they start flooding your cotton migrating into your fields corn corn as a, a, a definitely has an influence on ligus and especially adjacent to cotton i will say this a lot of people think when they look at a corn field and the, the corn plant itself starts to drying down or turning brown that's when they're getting a big movement out of corn into cotton that's not true at all and we've actually tested this numerous times when the plant bugs move out of corn is really when you get brown dry silks not when the corn plant i mean and that's where they're at they're on the tassels and they're on the silks and when those dry down that's when you get the influx out of corn now corn can still be a problem just because it counts as a natural edge just like if you was on a wood line so you get an edge effect you'll always get the edge effect even you know as long as the corn is standing but the movement out of corn what we're going to get is when the silks turn brown Sales of peanuts soaring since the start of COVID. Why? Well, as you might be able to guess, peanut butter flying off shelves as people stock up on long-term essentials. What's the market effect? According to the National Peanut Board, grocery store sales in March 75% higher than last year. Snack peanuts up 25%. That initial spike has since stabilized. In shell peanuts taking a sales hit this year due to low baseball attendance for the same reason, COVID. And yes, that's how many peanuts get sold at baseball games, believe it or not. All is not lost concerning the precarious peanut. However, new research out of Arkansas shows the legume can bring life back to battered soil. According to Andy Van Gilder of, from the University of Arkansas, fields with the sorriest soils still give good yields to peanuts, specifically those with southern root knot nematodes. Financially, peanuts appear to be a growing market for farmers who can afford the specialized harvest equipment. Scott Stiles, University of Arkansas Extension Economist, says at just under $500 per acre, variable costs for peanuts are less than rice, corn, or cotton. However, fixed cost for peanut production is highest among the major crops grown in the state at $193 per acre. Total cost of production is about $692 per acre, still less than rice and cotton, and comparable to corn. And that's it for a deeper look into the markets. We're still moving up, barring some potential weather pitfalls. Can't predict everything, but I say we're still improving from the massive fall in quarter one. For now.